Welcome back guys. As promised, I'm gonna continue making videos with my 8th gen Civic Si. Hopefully you caught my last video on this car. Uh, if not, go back and check it out. I tuned this car with the couple mods that it has. It has a three and a half inch uh, K-tuned cold air intake, a K-tuned header, and a K-tuned three inch exhaust. I tuned it using Honda Flash Pro and it made 218 wheel horsepower and 160 foot pounds torque. Today, I want to show you how VTC cam gear angles can affect the tune. I'm starting off with the tune that I've already used as my base, which gives me an advantage, but it allows me to uh, adjust the VTC cam gear angles because I've already taken care of all my fueling. Um, and although adjusting VTC cam gear angles will affect fuel, it, gives, it still gives me a good starting point. What I've already done is done a bunch of pulls with different VTC cam gear angles. I did 10 degrees VTC, 20, 30, 40, and 45. And I, what I'm gonna show is how those different cam gear angles affected the power of this engine. So why don't I jump to the footage of all the VTC cam gear pulls that I've done and I'll, and I'll put in the screen what VTC angle it is. And you can actually hear how the different angles affect the, uh, the power of the engine. And once all that's done, I'll show you the graphs and how they've affected power. So let's get started. checked out the poles with the different VTC cam gear angles and you've seen how it, the engine sounds different with different VTC angles. Um, what I have up here on the graph is the original tune that I did where it made 218 wheel horsepower and 160 foot pounds torque. And the cam gear angles I ended up with for this tune were, as I mentioned in the previous video, were, were 30 degrees VTC in non VTEC, VTEC engaged at 4200 RPM and then we ran, and then I ran 45 degrees VTC up until 6,000 RPM. And at 6,000 RPM, I started tapering VTC to 20 degrees, and then I held 20 degrees from 8,000 to 8,500 RPM. So this is the results with those VTC cam, cam gear angles. Now I will show you how different angles affect the power. First, let's bring up this graph compared to just straight 10 degrees VTC across the board. So here in blue is what 10 degrees VTC looks like power wise. And you'll notice we've lost power everywhere. Uh, VTEC power is down. As soon as VTEC engages, it loses a ton of power and it never recovers. Although it starts trying to catch up, up at near red line, and this is a good example as to why you start tapering to a lower 
BTC cam gear angle at redline. So why don't I put up 20 degrees VTC now? Okay, so blue line is 20 degrees VTC. And as you can see, it's starting to get close in non VTEC because I ran 30 degrees in non VTEC. But as soon as VTEC engages, you end up losing a lot of power. And as we get close to uh, 8,000, it almost catches up to where it was. And the graph, the lines almost look the same at 8,000 8, and beyond because they, uh, they're both 20 degrees, but because the engine didn't have the benefit of running the, uh, the higher VTC cam gear angles in the mid range, you, the graph will never catch up. So it makes a big difference. If, if you don't get your VTC cam gear angles sorted out, making the best amount of power in the mid range, you'll never end up hitting that peak horsepower number. So let's uh, move on to what 30 degrees VTC looks like. All right, this is 30 degrees VTC. And as you can see, blue and red basically match in non VTEC because that's what we've been, uh, that's what I ran in non VTEC. But when uh, VTEC engages at 4,200 RPM, you don't get the jump up in power. And eventually they do end up, they end up catching up to each other uh, around 7,500 RPM. Be because I'm tapering from 6,000 to 8,000, right around here is probably where my map would have hit 30 degrees VTC. And, but as you see, if you hold 30 degrees VTC, you'll end up losing power, power by the time you actually hit red line. All right, so let's move on to 40 degrees VTC. All right, so the blue line here is 40 degrees VTC. And what we're now seeing in, in non VTEC is we've gone too high in VTC and we're starting to lose power as compared to what it was at 30 degrees VTC. Um, at VTEC, it does jump up, but I was running 45 degrees VTC in the mid range and we're still not ca caught up. And as you can see, as we get higher up in the RPMs, we sort of match. And this is probably an area where VTCs are very similar to my blended maps. But as we get higher, higher up in the RPM range, we start losing power again because this is where you need to start tapering it off. So that was 40 degrees. Let's take a look at 45 degrees. Okay, and the blue line here is 45 degrees. And what you can see is we've definitely lost a lot of power in non VTEC. VTEC engages and we're pretty much where we were with my original blended map. Not sure why it's a little bit lower in this range, but it's very close. But at 6,000, when I started tapering it to 20, you can see it's not done as well. It's not made as much power. Hopefully these examples of how VTC affects power gives you a good idea of how as a tuner, we go about trying to uh, blend VTC cam gear angles to make the most power. All this being said, I think it turned out to be a good example of how VTC cam gear angles truly affect the power delivery of your engine in that if they are not set correctly, you won't be able to hit the full potential of your, uh, of your setup. So thanks again for watching guys. I hope you're enjoying these, this series and I'm going to continue on. I have a whole bunch more videos planned for this car. So if you are liking them, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe so I can continue to keep growing this channel and creating more and more content. So thanks again for watching guys and I will see you again soon. Bye now.